Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Irene and I love all kinds of DIY from upcycling old furniture to making adorable little decor pieces. I especially love Christmas and have many great Christmas tutorials on my channel, although it's not the season now, but just in case. Today I'm so excited to be joining on an open challenge which is called a Thriftly Pro Trip and it is hosted by our Green Acres and the crafting cousins channels so i'll leave the links for the channels as well as the playlist of the open challenge down below in the description box just follow the link to watch many many great thrift makeovers as for me, while I'm traveling alone on this trip, I'll be upcycling some old serving dishes. I found them in my mom's barn, they were piled there for years, and today I'll try to bring new life into them. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll start with this enameled canister, it had been used for storing strawberry jam. And I'm going to make a vase or a decorative vessel out of it. The first thing I'm doing is giving it a good wash in a dishwashing machine and then priming it. Here a primer suitable for a metal is needed and I'm using a leftover primer I have from repainting my mom's kitchen. This is a bonding primer, so I'll use it for all of the makeovers today. I've decided to add some raised stenciling here. I'm attaching a stencil to the canister, it turned out to be too big, so I'm cutting the stencil in half. I'm fixing it with masking tape so that nothing moves. After that, I'm applying a thin layer of wood filler over the stencil. You want to have a quite a thin layer here, just about a millimeter over the surface. And I'm trying to make it as even as possible. After all the stencil is filled, I'm removing it right away. I'm doing this very carefully in order not to smudge the part. I let it dry and then I'm attaching the stencil again to finish the pattern on the other side of the canister. The pattern almost matched in the end, I was lucky. After everything dries well, I'm giving it a light sand to remove any sharp dips along the edges of the pattern and to smooth everything out a bit. I'm dusting the surface and it's now ready for painting. I've decided to give this vessel faux zinc look, I have already shown you this technique many times, I love it very much, it's especially good for old metal items, because you know they are made of real metal, so no one can tell this zinc surface is not real. To do it, first I'm painting the whole thing grey. I'm waiting for it to dry well and after this I'll be using another grey, which is a couple of shades lighter. I'm thinning it a little with water, then I'm crumpling a wet paper towel and I'm applying the paint onto the canister surface using the towel with blotting movements. Because there's so much water, the paint spreads a little and I get blurring uneven spots of light grey. I'm waiting again for it to dry completely and this time I'll take another grey color, which is a couple of shades darker than the original one. By the way, you can mix all these colors by yourself simply by adding different amounts of black and white paint. And I'm repeating all these steps again, thinning the paint, applying it with a wet crumpled towel and leaving it to dry. For the final layer, I'll use silver paint and repeat everything one more time. After this last layer, the surface becomes almost indistinguishable from a real old zinc one. To make it yet more realistic looking, I'm adding rusty brown color in places to add this rustic vintage feeling. 
In order to make the erased part stand out a little, I'm also dry brushing it brown. And in the end, I'm sealing it with a satin sealer. The canister looks like a real vintage thing now, and any flower arrangement will look great here. If you repaint a wider container or vessel like this, it would make an excellent planter. Such planters look especially good in a garden arrangement. The only thing is that you'll need to seal it with a weather-resistant sealer then. The next thing that caught my eye was a small sugar bowl which had no lid. I'm going to make an antique clay vessel out of it. First I'm cleaning and priming the bowl and then I'm painting it dark grey. Actually, this wasn't necessary as I'll make the texture using a wood filler and it holds well on ceramic as is. And besides, the layer of party covered the main color almost completely in the end. But at that time I didn't decide what exactly I would do with the bowl, so I primed and painted it. After it's fully dry, I've decided to make the surface more textured and so I'm applying wood filler with poking motions with a stiff bristle brush. Here you can use a variety of techniques and apply putty with a spatula or with a gloved hand with patting movements. The pattern will be a little bit different every time. I want rough texture here, but not too rough, so the layer of the putty is quite thin. After drying, I'm giving the bow a light sand to remove any sharp tips and to make it a bit smoother. Next, I'm going to paint the bow. I'm applying the paint with a stiff bristled brush in a rubbing motion, so I'll get uneven blended spots all over and I'm also layering colors. First I'm applying brown, then grey, then greenish beige, until I get an overall uneven grey-brown tone. Here you can play with colors depending on what shade you want to end up with. You can use only grays or only beige shades, just use very natural earthy tones. To smooth out the transitions between different shades, I'm thinning a light brown paint with water and applying it all over the bowl and immediately erasing it using a wet cloth, so the coating gets translucent. You can also layer these wet steps till you like the result. In the end, I'm dry brushing the bottom and the top of the bowl brown to darken them a little and make it look more natural, and then I'm adding just a little green in places. Finally, I'm sealing the bowl with wax. It turned out to be a charming little vessel, it will go especially well in a modern minimalist interior, making a nice contrast, although it looks quite organic among vintage items as well. My next project is an old coffee pot. I like its shape, but I've decided to change its color. First I'm cleaning and then priming it, just as the other items. I've decided to paint it a soft mint color. I love this shade, it's bright and very spring filling and at the same time muted and not flashy. I'm giving it three layers to be sure the shade is dense and uniform. The coffee pot looks like new after repainting, but I opt for an older look, so I'm painting the upper rounded edge dark grey, imitating enamel. I'm also darkening the spout of the pot and in places I'm adding little dark spots, as if the enamel has chipped off here. Well, finally I've decided to add some nice writing here. I've printed the picture on a laser printer and I'm covering it with a couple of layers of glossy varnish. I'm also applying varnish to the side of the coffee pot. 
I let it dry well and after this I'm applying more varnish where I want the image to be and pressing the image tightly to it face down. Once again I'm leaving it to sit overnight, then I'm moistening the paper well and gently rolling it with my fingers until the image appears. You want to roll the paper long enough so that there are no white spots from the paper left, but be careful in order not to remove too much. After it's done, the only thing left is to seal the coffee pot with several layers of glossy varnish. And we're done! As you can see, this is a very quick and simple makeover. You can repaint any old teapot like this if you say like the shape but don't like the color, or it just looks sloppy because of age, like mine did. You can put flowers in such a pot or simply use it for decorating and arrangements. And finally I've cut a dish. I think this was a biscuit dish, it's very old and has many chips along the edges. I want to make a tray out of it. So after a spa session in the dishwasher, I'm priming the dish just like everything else. After the primer has dried, I'm painting the dish ivory. It took me two layers to cover the greyish green primer. Now I've remembered that I have very nice napkins in white and blue. This is from Michael Design Works. I'll leave the link for it in the description box below. I'm cutting out an oval according to the size of the bottom of the dish as I want to get the smoothest surface without any wrinkles. As you can see, I've placed the part of the print with a bird in the very center. And I'm cutting out two pieces for the sides of the dish from the rest of the napkin. I'm also cutting out the print near the edges so that the edges are not so noticeable. I'm separating the top layer of the napkin with the print. I'm placing the napkin face down on a sheet protector, moistening it and gently straightening it right on the sheet protector. I'm applying Mod Podge onto the bottom of the dish and attaching the napkin here right over the sheet protector. It's transparent, so you can see well how it goes. I'm pressing the napkin to the surface and then carefully removing the sheet protector. And we've got a perfect surface without a single crease. Napkins increase in size a bit when moistened and because of this you may get creases after applying them as Mod Podge also contains water and if you pre-moisten a napkin over a sheet protector like this you will remove any creases easily. It's a little bit more complicated to work with the dish sides. Firstly, the napkin doesn't fit on the sheet protector in length. And secondly, the sides of the dish are not flat, so it's a bit harder to attach the napkin with a sheet protector here. But in the end it worked. The main thing here is to take your time. I'm carefully smoothing out the few creases that appeared with wet fingers. And while the napkin is still wet, I'm tearing off the excess napkin to get a nice and smooth edge. I've also decided to make the sides for the tray. So I'm making a long cast strip from self-hardening clay. In order to make the cast of the desired length, I'm taking out the ready-made piece and laying its edge back into the mold. 
I'm doing this because clay almost always shrinks a little after drying and all the joints diverge and if you have a single piece this will not happen. I'm applying Mod Podge along the edge of the dish and attaching the finished cast to it. I'm cutting off a couple of leaves at the end of the cast to get a kind of a finished tip like on a real garland. Similarly I'm making the second garland and attaching it on the second half of the dish. After drying I'm painting the leaves ivory the same color as the main dish is. And I'm also dry brushing ivory over the napkin part a little at the very edge of the garland to get a smooth transition here. I'm waiting until everything dries well, then I'm thinning the blue color with water, I've picked up more or less the same blue shade as the napkin has. I'm applying the thinned paint over the leaves and immediately wiping it off with a damp cloth. The blue color will remain only in the recesses and will be erased on the tops. This makes the relief stand out and coordinates great with the napkin print. Finally, I'm dry brushing the leaves ivory, as I thought they are a bit dark. And in the end, I'm sealing it with a glossy varnish. I think the tray looks so stylish, similar to Delft porcelain due to this blue and white print. You can decorate any plate or a dish like so, or even make imitation ancient European tiles, if you decoupage this napkin on a plain white tile. So I hope you liked today's project. If it is so, please don't forget to give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. It really helps my channel out. Thanks for watching this video and hope to see you in the next one. Bye!